people like achieving things. And in the occult, there is nothing better to achieve than obtaining a new grade, especially if you are a ceremonial magician, either in some form of solitary Golden Dawn practice or in some Thelemic practice where you are obtaining different levels and you are aspiring to higher levels, from Zelator to Theorgus to Practicus to Philosophus. This is a common thing. So let's talk a little bit about the grade stuff, and uh, why grades aren't that important. I am Dave the Amateur Magus on this channel, I talk all about the mechanics behind ceremonial magic, occultism, esotericism, and the mechanics behind everything you can find within a dusty old grimoire. On today's episode we will be talking about the grades of ceremonial magic and why they do and do not matter. If you enjoy my content and you want to support the channel, you can go down to the link in the description and support me over on Patreon, or I recently just opened up astrology readings as well as other consultations and tarot readings for those of you looking for that. So if you want to schedule an appointment, you can reach out to me either on social media or at my email, which will be in the description below. And if you are supporting me on Patreon, you have my thanks for your continued and ongoing support. So let's get into the grade system, shall we? Ceremonial magic has a grade system that is usually associated with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Typically, you start out, well, Typically, you start out outside of the Tree of Life, and you start outside that, and then you begin climbing the tree. The first grade of Ceremonial Magic is usually going to be Neophyte, which is where you're just getting your basic start, and you are kind of just banishing, meditating, and that's really it. This is to do something called cleaning the vessel. This is to clean and cleanse your energetic body, of all of the potential energy parasites as well as any of the negative nasty stuff that you may or may not have on you that you have accumulated from your pre-magical experience and life. After that, you've cleansed yourself, you've become a sacred holy temple, you have cleaned the temple in a manner, and then you go and muddy that up by going into Zelator. Zelator is typically the element of earth, and it typically is correspondent to the sphere of Malkuth when it comes to the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Because in ceremonial magic, in mostly Golden Dawn style traditions, uh, if you're post-Golden Dawn or Thelemic, this is going to probably apply to you. Typically what's going to happen is you're going to be climbing up the Tree of Life, and you're going to start from Malkuth, and then you're going to go up the grades that correspond to Malkuth, and then you're going to go up the grades that correspond to Yesod, then Hod, then Netzach, then Tipareth, and then you usually get some weird, uh, we'll get to there when we get to Tipareth. But when it comes to Zelator, this is where the impurities of the physical body are brought into focus. This is where you start to work on your habits, you start to work on yourself, and you start to work on your physical situation. And when it comes down to it, you start to realize your foundations might be a little bit weak, and you start to solidify them. This is where foundations are brought into question and solidified. If you don't like your job, usually your job will get replaced with a new better job, that kind of thing. And then you go up a grade, and you go to the sphere of Yesod, and Yesod is the sphere of the moon, and the moon is where you start working with planetary forces, usually the moon, and sometimes other people will have you work with Saturn in Malkuth, it depends on the system and the tradition you're working out of. However, the system that I worked out of, the Kabbalah Magic and the Great Work of Self-Transformation by Liam Thomas Christopher, it's a... When you get to the sphere of Yesod, you also work with the moon as kind of a counterbalance. The only sphere that doesn't have a counterbalancing planet is actually the sun in Tipareth, but um, we'll talk about that when we get there. When it comes to the moon and when it comes to Yesod, you start to realize your divinatory practice is much more accurate now. You start to have weird thoughts, you start to have errant thoughts, and you start to have thoughts that your thoughts are thinking. This is the grade of air, and when it comes to the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, when it comes to the grades, Thericus is all about the theory and none of the practice. You start to learn the ins and outs of your thought processes and how they relate to the world around you and how you become what you think about. Now, this is not going to be the worst thing in the world. You're going to learn why you end up having these thought processes 
altering them and seeing how they affect you and how you are as a person. Then we get up to the Sphere of Hode, and the Sphere of Hode is Practicus. Now, when it comes to the Sphere of Hode, this is the elemental sphere of, or the elemental grade of water. Traditionally, this is where you start working with the watery, more emotional side of things. And I'm just going to tell you that the uh, grade of Practicus is not fun. Usually, the grade of Practicus is where all of the emotional turmoil that is kind of really, really important for you to settle gets resolved in not necessarily the most subtle of ways in my experience and the experience of others. Though, if you are a generally emotionally stable person and you don't really have that many massive emotional issues that you need to work on, it's not nearly as bad. This is the grade where you will mostly be working with the element of water. Then we go into the element of fire. For those who work with the Flames must first work with the lustral waters, as it were, according to the Golden Dawn. And this is where we get the final element of the traditional four elements, the element of fire. This is where we're going to be working in the sphere of Netzach, and this is where your actions are going to be exemplified. Now, there is a final grade in the Kabbalah Magic Book, as well as a kind of intermediary grade in the... Golden Dawn curriculum, and that is going to be the Grade of Portal. This is where we have Spirit, and this is the threshold of the Adeptus Grades. Now, the Adeptus Grades are Adeptus Minor, Adeptus Major, and Adeptus Exemptus. Now, Adeptus Exemptus is named because it is supposed to be the grade where you have gotten out of reincarnation, so to speak. You are exempt from reincarnation. Adeptus Minor is where you are an adept, but you still have more to learn, and Adeptus Major is you have learned a lot of things, but you still aren't a master. You are an adept in the fullest sense of the words. Now, what the hell do the adept grades do? The reason why Portal is an intermediary grade is because the first thing you need to do in terms of, I want to get into the base level of Adeptus Minor, and I want to be considered an adept, is you need to achieve the knowledge and conversation of your Holy Guardian Angel. That is the basic thing you need to do. Before that, you're just doing magic to balance yourself, and then when you get to Portal, you are preparing the final leg of your journey, and then all of a sudden you finally get to the knowledge and conversation of your Holy Guardian Angel, and then you are an Adeptus Minor. And then everything doesn't matter, right? Because you're an Adeptus Minor, you're an Adept now, you can do whatever you want, right? Right? Let's talk about what the Adeptus Minor grades actually mean. And I say grades, because here's where we get into a little bit of a weird thing. When you get to the Adeptus Minor, you have effectively crossed the Veil of Parakath, which I've talked about in a Patreon exclusive. When you've crossed the Veil of Parakath, the way that it was conceived by the uh, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn is that when you do the first grade of Neophyte, you aren't really doing anything. And then you get to the... you get initiated into Zelator, and then you have to do... Congratulations, you now have to do Zelator, and then you have to do Zelator, uh, Theorcus of Zelator, and then you have to do Practicus of Zelator, and Philosophus of Zelator, and there were subgrades that you needed to do. Now, these are often thrown aside, however, in the uh, Red Brick, you kind of still go through them, it's just that they are crammed into the span of a week in the form of the body and exercises. This is where you are accumulating and you are integrating the Kabbalistic Tree of Life into your aura. This is why you are doing that. If you were ever in confusion about why you would do that, that is why. And when you get to Adeptus Minor and you get in the KNC of your HGA, you have finished Neophyte of Adeptus Minor. Kind of, sort of. You have now started, and you are now fully able to go through, and you go through a little bit of a, uh, you go through the sub-spheres of the, the Tree of Life, which is a whole, whole concept. You are basically going through Tipereth's version of Malkuth, of Yesod, of Hode, of Netzach, and then you get back to Malk, and then you get back to Tipereth proper, Tipereth of Tipereth. 
and you go through this and you climb up the sub luminaries and you climb up them and you have to do this with the accompaniment of the angel because the angel is now the one who is dictating what you should and shouldn't be doing you are no longer worrying about some book or the opinions of others nor should you ever worry about the opinions of others for whatever reason but the Opinions of your angel are all that matters. This is why even if you fall off and you take a little bit of a break from magic, which you are encouraged and forced to do after the opera melon, you do have to go ahead and you do have to start climbing up that tree again. You gotta keep climbing. You gotta keep climbing. You gotta keep ascending to godhood. Despite the fact that godhood is a completely and totally unobtainable goal, but we will talk about that at some other time. Hopefully you guys learned something, and I want to make it clear that this is just kind of my perspective on this. This isn't like the Golden Dawns or Tholema proper or the OTOs. This is just my view of it. You go through these little sub-trees as you climb up, and that's why when you start working in Adeptus Minor, and this is something that I have had the fortune of getting to watch other people do as well, when you get to Adeptus Minor, you start to realize that you have these tiny little, like, sections of your life where you have to start dealing with the element of earth more but you just went to adepthood why are you having to work with the element of earth it's because of these little subgrades and eventually you have to go through and then you have to get to adeptus major you get the clip off and check that you get to adeptus exemptus and you make your own different version of enochian and that's all fine and dandy and that's what you do so yeah hopefully you guys have learned something hope everyone is having a good day if you're not having a good day Hope your day gets better. Take it easy. Take care.